some people you know gain some element of it. There has to be a you know a gene or if not, it could be a vegetary, I guess, but there has to be something that would uh, you would think, you know, that would cause certain people to be circumcised. Yeah. Yeah. Which may not be uh Today's Caden's birthday, isn't it? Well, hopefully so. It is 6 o'clock. It's good to have everyone here. <coughs> Crowd's really light. We only have five thus far. Ruby's still in Arkansas, and hopefully she's able to listen. Uh, Elaine is listening, said she was in E-Town, so maybe it means Alinda is listening. Aaron's listening. Mom and Jerry. Uh, I think Vicki was babysitting tonight, and, and so she uh, said she'd have the baby and would be listening. So, uh, but it's good to have all here this evening. And uh, Ruby's dad, of course, had surgery yesterday to remove the place off his forehead. They had to go back in for, well, do more surgery while he was still there. They found out there were some more, but they think they got it all. I don't know what kind of cancer it is. Ruby, if you're listening, you might send that, but hopefully everything was taken care of. Ruby, unless something comes up, plans to return on Friday. And she still plans ladies' Bible class tomorrow night. She'll do that from Arkansas. So hope people can listen in. And if for some reason you can't get on Google Hangouts, I have a link that I'll send the ladies uh, that uh, will just let you hear because I will be listening. I won't be listening actively. I'll have it turned down to ladies' Bible class, but then I'll be rebroadcasting that out on a stream that people can listen to. You can't answer on that stream. You have to be on Hangouts to be able to interact well we're up to seven so uh we have ruby if she's listening is probably taking down names kathy's not with us they had to take mike's mother to get a shot in her knee so got that message from her i think i've covered everything here sharon is not well she won't be here tonight 
said she is coming down with something. And I'm going to mention at the beginning, I went to class. I had mentioned in my class, or one of the classes where Isaiah was addressing a northern tribe, I, I say everything wrong. Half the time I call Ruby Mom or Mom Ruby, and he's addressing the southern tribe, and she was asking me about about that. And I, I know me, I just spoke incorrectly, but I'm glad she said something, so I can correct that. Isaiah is definitely in the southern tribe because the kings that he lists with, he's addressing Jerusalem, which was the southern tribe, so that's definitely the south, and I appreciate her pointing uh, that out. Unfortunately, you can't really go back and correct what you said on all the recordings, but maybe they will contact me as well. I do a lot of times just say things, tend to be a little dyslexic in my speech. But, uh, well, we have me and Larry. It's uh, Sherry, Andrew, and Stuart, and Jordan, and John. We'll have John bring up the rear. There, so, uh, But we do have seven. It's good to have everyone here this evening. Let's go ahead and get started. It's a very short lesson tonight. It's only six verses. I didn't want to split the chapter. Chapter's up of next week, so that's why I did that. So maybe we'll be out just a little earlier uh, with that. Let's sing number 70. It's one we don't sing very often. You may or may not be familiar with it. It's almost a children's gospel song with the sound of it and some of the wording in it. Number 70. Can you count the stars of evening that are shining in the sky? Can you count the clouds that daily over all the world go by? God the Lord who doth not slumber Keepeth all the boundless number, but he careth more for thee, but he careth more for thee. Can you count the birds that warble in the sunshine all the day? Can you count the little fishes? that in sparkling waters play. God the Lord their number knoweth, for each one his care he showeth. But will he not remember thee? Shall he not remember thee? Can you count the many children in their little beds at night, who without a thought of sorrow rise again at morning light. God the Lord who dwells in heaven, loving care to each has given. He has not forgotten thee, He has not forgotten thee. Before our prayer this evening, let's uh, sing number 168, and then we'll ask Larry to lead us in prayer. Continue to remember our sick. uh, Ruby's mother is, uh, and father both do okay. Of course, her dad, I really meant to mention, he recovering for surgery. He can't lay down for two days, so he's having to sleep, setting up. And uh, so Ruby will be there a couple more days to help them. And then uh, hopefully they'll be okay on their own. Continue to remember Mom and Alice as well. Alice has had a really bad week uh, with the pain that she suffers. Drag my feet here a little. we got some coming in. And uh, Larry will be going in for surgery. He uh, had the preliminaries done. Uh, He'll be going in for uh, uh, December 3rd to have knee replacement surgery on his other knee. Of course, continue to remember Aaron as well uh, and uh, any others that we might remember. Uh, Vic, you still has some health issues and Lois as well, Carrie's mother. I think I about got everybody there, and if I left out any, please do text me. Continue to remember Shirley as well, who hasn't been able to be with us much lately. Number 168, and then Larry will lead us in prayer. (coughs) Walking in sunlight all of my journey Over the mountains, through the deep 
Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light, in Him is no darkness. Ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, Heavenly sunlight flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight ever rejoicing, Pressing my way to mansions above, singing His praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with Glory divine, hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Would you bow with me? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this beautiful day. We're so thankful, Father, at the closing of this day that we're able to assemble here in your name to sing these songs of praise unto you, to learn more of your will concerning us, to uh, go to you in prayer, beseeching you for the, the many blessings and the things that you give us each day, that you would continue and that you would continue to be with us and, and uh, keep us safe. We're so thankful, Father, that we're uh, permitted to assemble here tonight. Uh, we're so thankful that we live in such a great country and the many freedoms that we enjoy that we are able to worship and serve you without fear of mankind. And Father, we're so thankful that you have been with us today, that you've kept us safe, that you have given us a good day, a safe day. And we pray, Father, that you would continue to be with us and, and uh, keep us safe through the night. We're so thankful, Father, for uh, the assembly this evening. We pray, Father, as we study your word that we would be able to gain uh, the wisdom and understanding we need to always write the advise your truths that we would be able to uh, <clears throat> learn the uh, full complete meaning of what you have written down for us and father we pray that as we study that we would be able to dismiss the things of this world from our minds and from our hearts so that we'd be able to meditate upon your word and your word only and pray father that you would be with us uh, each of us that we can be good examples for you as we go through life that you'd be with us father that that we would always uh, be courageous in our service to you that we would stand up for those things that we know to be right and we'd uh, stand up against those things that are wrong father and we pray that you'd be with us and help us that we would always uh, look to you for the strength and guidance we need and we pray father as we go through life that as we study your word and as we learn how to live and conduct our lives before others that we can or that we are better able to teach those we come into contact with father and we pray that as we go through life that we would be able to reach many who are are lost and and uh, and those who have uh, once been members and have fallen away that we can influence them for good that they would come uh, to you soon and father we pray as we go through life that we would be uh diligent in our service to you that we would always do those things father that would be pleasing to you even though we know that satan is there to tempt us and draw us away and we know father that we fall uh 
many, many times each day. But, Father, we know that uh, Jesus came to this earth and suffered and died, was raised the third day that we can have our sins forgiven, they can have our sins cleansed, Father, and we pray that each and every one that's here this evening, those who are listening, Father, would have pure and clean hearts in your sight this evening, and that we would be pleasing unto you. We're so thankful, Father, for the good health that we enjoy this evening, but we know that there are many who are not with us because of illness. We pray, Father, that you would continue to be with them, bless them. Pray, Father, that you would be with Shirley Edwards and bless her, heal her. We pray, Father, that you would be with Shirley Parsons, that you'd be with her, bless her, heal her. Pray, Father, that you would continue to be with Alice and bless her. Pray, Father, that you would be with <coughs> with Ruby's parents, her father, uh, especially, Father, that uh, cancer he has would be uh, would not be uh, serious, that it would uh, be uh, healed and he would be back to normal. We pray, Father, that you would be with him and and uh, and Ruby's mother, that you'd bless them. We pray, Father, that you would continue to be with Vicki, bless her, that you'd be with Lois and bless her, heal her. We pray, Father, that you'd be with Aaron, bless her. We pray, Father, that you would be with all of those, Father, that uh, are sick and needed your help, that you'd be with them and bless them. We pray, Father, that you would be with us as we study your word, that we can have open minds and open hearts, and we would be uh, willing to uh, learn more of your will, and that we would be pleasing unto you. Is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. I heard a text, uh, Sherry and Andrew, I meant to, but I talked to Adam, his cat was fine. Totally back to normal. I texted him, I really thought about his cat a lot, and any listen online, I really have a tender heart for animals. I told him, I said, I'd pray for your kitten. He'd come with him to church, got on the axle, and apparently fell out, and did a little injury, his tongue was hanging out. The cat's too. Adam was quite distressed. No, it wasn't Adam I was talking about. <laughs> and so, but the little kitten is fine. That's the one he brought in the other night so if you of course uh, you know that's very biblical to take care of your animals uh we're told uh does anyone know what verse in the bible when you probably i don't know what verse either i have to look at about that tells us to really take care of our animals of course you know it's fine to kill and slaughter animals we're supposed to eat but if you have animals that you know you're taking care of uh it says the righteous man cares for the life of his beast and uh that's proverbs twelve ten. a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So if you're a righteous person, you'll be even kind to animals. So, I mean, it should be. That's a very biblical thought. But anyway, let's continue on. Uh, we'll sing two more. If no one objects, I'm doing this because there's no one here to take attendance. I want to get a picture of the audience. Sandy, work with me. It's all right. <laughs> Just do what you can. Uh, but because uh, I'll send that to Ruby, so because she's got the attendance book out there, and uh, we'll take care of that. So I appreciate everybody letting me uh, snap a photo there. Let's sing two more, and we'll have our classes. Like I said, it's a very short chapter. It's only six verses tonight. We don't have any young ones. Caden's not here on his birthday, and so I didn't figure he'd be able to come tonight. But uh, today is his second birthday, and so let's just sing two more, and then we'll have our classes. I was aggravating Sandy there a little. Let's sing one of her favorites, number 414. You told me this was one of your favorite songs, didn't you, Sandy? Uh, yes. I always remember. She, I, this is one of my favorites, too. It's got such a, a solid, uplifting sound of, uh, and talks about very heavenly things uh, from Revelation. 414. <clears throat> On Zion's glorious summit stood a numerous host redeemed by blood. They hymned their king in strands divine. I heard the song and strove to join. I heard the song and strove to join. suffered sword or flame for truth or Jesus lovely shout victory now and hail the land and bow before the grave and bow before the Eternal shall 
shall feast their soul and seeds of bliss forever new rise in succession to their view rise in succession to their view holy 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 lord god of hosts on high Hey, let's, uh, we're running a little later, but we have such a short chapter tonight. Let's go ahead and sing one more before our <coughs> classes, our class number 134. 134. <coughs> God is the fountain which 10,000 blessings flow. To him my life, my hair, and friend, and every good I owe. The comforts he affords are neither few nor small. He is the source of my portion and my all. He fills my heart with joy, my lips attunes for praise, and to His glory I'll devote the Okay, this is going to be our only class for the evening. We don't have any little ones here. We'll be going over Isaiah 4. It is only six verses, so if you don't have your lesson, it's a one-to-one -one ratio tonight. All right, that's just a... Randomly call on, well, from the flashcards here. Uh, six people. Number one is, not here, Adam. Uh, verse one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. Okay, number two, Andrew. Verse two, and that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruits of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. Number three, Larry. Verse three, and it shall come to pass. 
that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. Everyone, one, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Okay, number four. It's me, it's verse four. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. All right, number five. Let's see. Quite a few. Sherry. It's verse five. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. And number six. John. Verse 6. And there will be a tabernacle for shade in the daytime from the heat, for a place of refuge and for a shelter from storm and rain. Okay, a very short chapter. We'll <coughs> go over these and make any comments that you might have. Isaiah, of course, we learn was from uh, of what time he was. He was four kings. Now, I did mention at the beginning, but since class has started, I want to mention again, Sharon asked me, I had texted and asked me about me commenting that Isaiah was addressing the northern kingdom. I spoke incorrectly. I mean, it is obviously the southern kingdom because, as you see from the, from the verses, like at chapter 1, he's addressing, he talks about Jerusalem. That was the southern kingdom. Of course, that's where David lived, you know, was king, some of his reign, and was in the... Uh, uh, he spoke concerning Judah, which was the southern kingdom, and Jerusalem, kings of, and he mentions these kings of Judah. And so he obviously was a southern kingdom. I do tend to, so many times, uh, Ruby has has uh, had to point out that, or maybe even signal from here, no, that's not it, I'll say the very opposite, so I just spoke that incorrectly. I don't know why I said northern. I may have said northern and southern because you tend to say it all together, but I appreciate Sharon pointing that out. I was, I was wrong in that. And uh, it is definitely, he's addressing the southern kingdom. Even though they were considered the better kingdom, they certainly had sins. Zion was Jerusalem. As you see going throughout, uh, he says he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Perhaps I saw the and and was thinking about two kingdoms, but Judah and Jerusalem both would be in the southern kingdom. And so that's to whom he is addressing. So I wanted to correct that. And, Hopefully anybody that heard before, and it's in verse 3 as well, and I'm sure you'll see it again, that uh, starting out here, he really lets it be known to whom he is writing. And so it is the southern kingdom. Judah, of course, is the tribe from which Jesus uh, descended. And so we talked about last week, since the chapter is so short, I want to catch up just a little bit of, and I could have gotten in part of chapter 5, but I thought, well, I didn't want to split it up because it's split like this for a reason because of really the subject matter. Um, but the things that were going to happen to them, their food, their water would be taken away. I think it was the Bible quiz. The women walked with what? Stretched out what? Necks. Necks and wanton eyes like holding with pride and making a tinkling with their feet or the jingling. Uh, the, the sound of the things that they wore, and they would uh, they would be uh, you know str stricken with various things, and their nice uh, clothes they had, the tires about them, uh, would be changed into something. It talks about their rings and their nose jewels that they wore. This was obviously something that the women uh, pro wore, and they uh, the glasses, the finally the hand mirrors. Glasses are mentioned. As a matter of fact, if you were listening today to Bible readings, Ezekiel was read, or, or Exodus. Uh, looking glasses are mentioned in that chapter as well. And uh, Exodus 38, 8 in that book. The labor of brass in the foot of it was made from the looking glasses of the women assembly. And the fine things they had were going to be turned into something negative. Instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Women usually... Make a sweet smell by doing what? Perfumes. 
and such like. And it would be turned to a stink instead of a girdle or a stomacher, which was a, a robe-type garment. They would have sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. It was all going to be turned to something negative. The men would fall by the sword, and they would lament these things. And that's where that we closed out last week. He's bringing judgment upon them because of their sins. So let's read these six verses and make some comment as we go. We could read all six and go back and comment, but I think I'll just, we'll read them a, a verse at a time. I will read a little bit about what uh, Kaufman says about this. It's just, uh, in this chapter, we have a threatening of the scarceness of man who might fitly enough had been added to the close of the He said this could have been added to the previous chapter. But a promise of the restoration of Jerusalem's peace and purity, righteousness, and safety in the days of the Messiah. Thus in wrath, mercy is remembered. Even when God was against them, He is going to remember them later on. All right, so let's go ahead, and, and, he, and it makes sense. This verse could have been put with the previous chapter. It was men that divided the Bible into chapter and verses, so sometimes it's not always a logical division. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away thy reproach. Uh, it was threatened that the mighty men would fall by, war, uh, by the sword of war, and it was threatened as punishment to the women uh, here that the men would fall. Now we have the effect and consequence of the great slaughter of men. There was going to be, uh, it says throughout, he says something here, I don't guess we have a way to prove per se, but on the average there's nearly an equal number of men and women born to the world. And of course there's more women in the world, but it's not, it's not like 50 to 1. It's not 7 to 1. And what he's saying here, because of the punishment that seven women would take hold of one man. There wasn't going to be enough men left over because of the sins uh, that they had done that were brought upon them. And that's why he says this could be uh, put with the previous chapter, that men would fall by the sword, the mighty in war, and then seven women are going to take hold of one man, saying... We shall eat our own bread and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away thy, our reproach. It's going to get to the point that they were going to be asking men, marry us so we can be called by your name, take away our reproach. We'll provide our own bread and our own food or clothing, but we need a husband. And so he's, it was getting to the point uh, that was going to, it says their main care was to be able to get a husband. And with them, the re uh, they would have rather lived I'm just scanning over some of the things he wrong uh, it was better for them the reproach of vice was than to have not been married he's talking about I think what he's saying and of course it doesn't matter what he says what does the Bible say but I do feel that they were thinking it was better for them to live in adultery than it was to have never been married and that was how reproachful that was to them and it's almost the opposite of the woman that Jesus talked to at the well. He said, you've had seven husbands, and the one that you have not now, that you have is not your husband. Uh, that's in John 4. And uh, it must be, it's a number that's always represent completeness. Uh, Let me just look in John 4 regarding this. I'm sorry, five husbands. So I looked it up. I didn't think seven was right. And number six was this one. So I stand corrected on that. She had five husbands. And what I'm thinking of was that uh, the woman who, they said, whose will she be in the resurrection? She's had seven husbands. And whose will she be in the resurrection? Jesus said, you do greatly err, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. And... She had had seven husbands. So that reminds me a little bit of this passage, except it's the opposite. Seven women would take hold of one man. They were going to have such a terrible time in their society, there were not many men left. And that really reminds me of the opposite. Remember the tribe of Benjamin? What happened there? 
Yeah, there were so few women they had to kidnap wives. They went and waited by a road after a festival and just grabbed them women going by. Some of you young men, I'm not saying that's what to do, but keep a watch. <laughs> you know, that's what they had to do. But uh, they were able to get, they had such few that they had to just go get wives, literally take them. Of course, that wouldn't be obviously even legal to do. But they, there would be so few men, they were, seven women would beg one man, take us to take away our reproach, the reproach of not being married. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped out of Israel. Now here he does use Israel, which often refers to the northern kingdom, but it can refer to them as a whole. And so he's probably just speaking of Israel uh, spiritually here that come out of the kingdom. And so there is probably references to the church to come. I'll just read something he wrote here. By the foregoing threatenings, he really thinks, and I, I agree that it would have been good to have had verse 1 with chapter 3 because, like I said, mankind divided because he's still talking about the problems that would be brought before all the women were killed. And so really we start a whole new thought in verse 2. 2 through 6 he actually groups together. It says, even after their very deplorable condition, here the sun breaks out from behind the cloud. And so we have many promises here coming. And that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful. What day do you think he's talking about coming? Well, probably the church. Jesus is referred to as a, as a, as a vine, and he's referred to as the branch that people would grow out of. We'll see branch referenced quite a bit. Uh, and referring to Jesus. Zechariah 3.8 is probably the clearest. Hear now, o Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows are set before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. And Jesus said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches, and we're the branch off of him. So the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that escaped out of Israel. If you can escape the sin, it'll be comely and beautiful. You don't have to be concerned about the things that are happening about you. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. So those that stay, I think it's a metaphor for just remaining faithful here in Zion and in Jerusalem, you'll be called holy. Everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem, you'll be written among the living for remaining in Zion and in Jerusalem. And Zion and Jerusalem are obviously many times used as a type of the church that is to come. And it's probably what he's referencing here, remaining faithful to the Lord. Just three more verses. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So, they will be blessed if they stay in the Lord. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. Maybe some references to baptism here. And of course, a metaf metaphor in washing away sins. And baptism is a literal washing in water, but it washes away our sins. So he purges away their blood, the things they've done, by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Uh, that's how things were often cleaned, that they would burn it. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I can't think of the verse right offhand, anything that could that was unclean if it could go through the fire you were put it uh in the fire and uh see if i can find it real quick okay numbers thirteen twenty one. everything that made that may abide in the fire you shall make go through the fire and it shall be clean nevertheless it shall be purified with the water separation so if they had something unclean that could withstand fire metal they were to purify it with fire and then go through the water of separation. And all that abides not the fire, you might go through the water. So if you couldn't put it in fire, something wood or clothing, you had to wash it. And so 
the things that could stand the fire were in a sense double cleaned, fire and water. And that's what they were going to have as well. They were going to be purged by judgment and by the spirit of burning. And of course, we're told our God is a consuming fire. Are there any questions or comments on this? All right, verse 5. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. And upon all the glory shall be a defense. So by being in the Lord and staying faithful, you'll have this constant overwatch and protection of the Lord. This obviously is referring back to what here? Well, when they wandered in the wilderness for the 40 years, remember? They had a cloud of, uh, a pillar of smoke by day and fire by night that God appeared before them at all times and to guide them and no doubt a remembrance that he was always there. So that's what he's going to do for us. And of course, not literally so, but spiritually so. And upon every dwelling place, wherever you may be. And the last verse tonight. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert or shelter from storm and from rain. So this verse is just saying you'll always have protection in the Lord. There'll be a place to go when it's hot to get in the shade. You'll have a place of refuge and shelter in storm. Um, so you see how that verse 1 really did continue the thought of chapter 3. The women would be bemoaning no men. But then verses 2 through 6 talks about in that day though, and I think that day for them was whenever they would return to the Lord, no doubt when they came out of captivity, but I think it's referring to the church probably more so. I think uh, Kaufman here, who I do look at sometimes, he was a member of the church in pretty sound writings, uh, thinks it's referring to the church that the Lord will establish. So you have the protection in that. And you'll be holy, you'll be purged, You'll have a dwelling place, the smoke by day and the fire by night, and a place to get out of the heat and a place to get from the storm. Really a pretty simple chapter. If you serve the Lord, you'll be protected. Are there any questions or comments? I didn't quit too early, but we are finished. Talking about verse 1, I read where 57% of the enlisted men that was worldwide uh, died in World War One, and it was estimated that. Yeah, Larry was saying for those listening online that he'd read that in World War One, fifty-seven percent of the men were killed, in World War Two, thirty-three million, and so a lot of women were left with us, and uh, people that never even got to marry, and it was going to be so bad the wars would take away their women or the men, and the women would have none. That is a real problem with war. Okay, we'll stop there. Let me go ahead and pass the lessons for next week. We're back to a full chapter. This was a full chapter, just short. 30 verses next week. Next week's the night before Thanksgiving. All through the house. Turkey. Uh, I Sandy, Larry's, and Patrick's birthday. Next Wednesday night. We, for our small group, we've got three people with the same birthday, November 27th. And that's your birthday, Sandy? Yes. I remember because we always celebrated at school and band. And, no. We did not. <laughs> well, you weren't there. You got there late. We'd already done it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Turn, if you will, is an invitation song.
number 674, Are You Washed in the Blood, is the subtitle of it. I picked it because of this verse, also a song I really like. But it says, When the Lord have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. It wasn't just the women, but the filth was, as you see earlier in the chapter, they were willing to live in adultery than to live their life uh, unmarried, which would have been okay spiritually to do, but it was such a reproach that they were turning to sin to fulfill themselves, to complete their lives by being married, even willing to share a man with uh, seven women were. And, but a day would come when the Lord would wash away their filth and purge them. And in the same way our filth, the sins that we have done, maybe we are doing, can be washed away in baptism. And of course, we lead up to that point by believing on the Lord, confessing His name, repenting of our sins, stop doing these things, and then to be baptized to wash away our sins. And that's permanent once you've done that correctly. But we may sin again, but we pray and ask for forgiveness of our sins. So as it says, the Lord shall have washed away the filth. That could have been some, I, I think no, there was no doubt that this was some prophecy of the church. Isaiah is going to have a lot about Christ and the church coming. And probably the washing away was yet maybe a hint of baptism to come. But if you're here and need to respond, I know everybody here has obeyed the Lord in baptism. And all the ones that are listening that I know of have. But maybe someone has it, or you need to come back to the Lord in repentance and prayer. Let's sing the first verse of 674 as we stand. <clears throat> have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you holy, trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? So cleansing blood of the Lamb. Mud spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Turn, if you will, as a closing song, number 19. Let's sing the last verse. I think it's the fifth verse. And then I'll dismiss us in prayer. Don't forget our services on the Lord's Day at 9 o'clock. <coughs> Hopefully Ruby will be home by then. She, she plans on coming home. Friday, but of course it's a little in the air with how our parents do and how our dad does following surgery. Her sister will be able to come next week, son. Uh, is there anything else that needs to be announced? Of course, keep Larry in mind as he'll be leaving us for a month, a month and a half. It won't be till December the 3rd. Will you be here that Sunday the 1st? Yes. And then the 3rd he has surgery and it's like last time he was able to come back after a month, but of course, you never know how it goes, but we probably won't see him again until up in January. Is there anything else? Last verse of number 19. Oh, thou thy cross be for my closing eyes shine through the Father, as we come to the end prayer, we're thankful for this midweek Bible study that we've had. We pray that you've been pleased. We pray that we've been able to glean the thoughts from these passages that of, of how that no matter what sin we're in, when we repent and come to you, that you will cleanse us and purge away our sins. Do forgive our sins as we repent and ask for forgiveness. Be it those of our number who are sick. Pray Ruby's dad has a complete recovery from his uh, cancer removed off of his head. Uh, give her mom good health. Give Ruby safety when she returns home at the end of this week. Continue to be with mom and Alice, uh, Vicki and Lois, McDaniel and uh, 
others who need our prayers, be a Shirley, uh, Brad Terry, and maybe those who are unknown to us. We pray that you'll bless and comfort them. Protect us as we leave. Bring us together again safely on the Lord's day. And finally, save us all in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.